Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. We're going to have Dr. Harold Newcomb here from Batesville, Mississippi. He's a technical service veterinarian from Merck Animal Health. And we're going to talk about parasites. We're going to talk about what they do to the animals. We're going to talk about how we can prevent them and what we do if we come across resistance with the products that we're using to prevent and control parasites. You're watching Doc Talk, and we'll be right back. Bovalis Nasalgen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk, and we're lucky enough to have a guest here that's a friend and a colleague from Batesville, Mississippi, uh, Dr. Harold Newcomb. And Dr. Newcomb has uh, owned and operated a practice. He's done about as much with cattle in the southeast and, and that. We've been acquainted for over two decades since uh, I was working in feed yards and you were, uh, had a lot of clients that sold cattle our way. Um, and, and now he is a technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health, so it gives you a platform to amplify the things you learned in practice and help us out uh, so much more. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Dan. Glad to be here. We're Glad so, to see you again. Yeah, yeah likewise, <laughs> likewise. It's great. Um, we're going to talk about parasites, and, and a lot of people that, that have cows and, and stalkers and things of that, you know, when they're out on grass, it's a, it's a big deal. and, and kind of lead us in uh, to what they do to, to our critters. Well, you know, parasites are, are, are everywhere. Every operation has got them, right? But I think it's important that we understand what they're actually doing to the animal. Basically, the, the, the parasites do three things. The first thing they do is reduce feed intake. That is the number one effect of the parasite on the animal. A lot of people don't understand that a parasitized animal yeah, they're losing nutrition, they're not able to absorb the, the nutrition from what they're eating, but they're actually consuming less. And when you start consuming less, it's going to affect production. It doesn't matter whether you measure it in average daily gain, milk production or reproduction, you're going to see a drop in that production. Yep. And the third thing that they do is they affect the immune system. They actually affect the way that animal can respond to like intercellular organisms such as viruses, coccidiosis for instance. Uh, they inhibit that type response. So it's, it's important that we get parasite control right. Yeah, it's, you know, even, you know, we practice it coming into the feed yard and we know we're not going to have an environment where they recycle, but you've got to clean them up um, uh, as they do. So where, where do we find the parasites? What, what, uh, well, you know, parasites, everybody treats the parasites in the cow because that's where they figure the majority of them are. But actually, the majority of the parasites are out there on the pasture. 90 to 95% of them live on the pasture in the forms of larvae and eggs. Okay. So the reason that's important is if we're just treating the cow without any consideration of what's going on out there in that pasture, we're probably not going to get too far. It also needs to make us think about the, the classes of the products that we're using. Right. Okay. So, so just in general, we, we, we clean up the cow 
but we've got to be ready to control for what's going to come next because they're not leaving that pasture. Right. So what we have to do is treat them strategically at strategic times. Basically, what I say is when your pasture is at its best, the parasites are at their best. Uh -huh. So what you want to do is treat that animal when you can have the most negative effect on the parasite in the animal as well on the pasture. It's called strategic deworming. It, it, that, that's just an, it's a fairly old concept, but it still works. Okay? Yep. And what you're doing is you're, you're, you're treating those animals probably about six, the adult animals now, probably about six to seven weeks after grass greens up. Okay? okay. If you're in the deep part of the south where I'm at, you're going to have to do it again about six to seven weeks after that. Because what you're doing is just as those parasites are ready to make that turn, you're killing them, you're letting them go out there and consume more larva, and about the time that second group's going through, you're going to, boom, kill them again. And then you've lowered the parasite burden on the pasture. Then you're going to depend on a hot, dry summer to help keep those parasites in check. Perfect. It's a great time to take a break. Folks, when we come back, more on parasites with Dr. Harold Newcomb. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of ResFlor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at ResFlorGold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alert Us On Farm test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alert Us On Farm test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Harold Newcomb. He's from Batesville, Mississippi, veterinarian who spends a lot of time studying parasites now. <laughs> yes. And, and he always has in practice, and so it brings a real practical side to what we're doing. So talk to me a little bit about how we diagnose what what the problems are, because it's not as simple as just assuming that everything's the same in the pasture or in our cows. Well, it, it's, re it's really not. Actually, you know, what we should do is trying to define what the parasite problem is on a particular operation. And the way we're going to do that is do fecal egg counts, okay, and that's where we take stool samples and, and see how many eggs per gram or eggs per three gram there are in that sample, okay? And from that, we can also do get an idea of which parasites are present. Uh, Merck maintains a database, a fecal egg count database, and, and we keep track of not only basically what the efficacy of these products are out there, but we try and keep track of basically which parasite is out when, okay? because there is a seasonality to the parasites. Makes sense. The other thing too is, I think you'll find is, that as that animal ages, they do develop some immunity to the parasites. All, it's not complete all the time, but they do develop some immunity. But that also helps, helps us see to which, which group needs treatment and which group needs treatment when, because they're not all the same. Because I'm sure everybody's heard of refugia, right? Yeah, oh yeah where you leave some animals untreated so you always have some parasites that haven't been exposed to the anthelminics, right? Well, that's a good idea, but the trouble is we don't necessarily know how to manage it, okay? Well, just as long as they don't pick me <laughs> yeah, that's as right. the one to leave his worms. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but how do you manage refugia? And, and, and I don't think that there's any really good literature on that 
but the best I know is if we don't treat everybody at the same time. I mean, basically, if you look at a cow-calf operation, you got the cows, you got the calves, replacement heifers, and bulls. So if we don't treat everybody at the same time, because each group optimally doesn't need to be treated at the same time, then we're going to maintain some form oh. of refusia in that yeah. operation. Makes sense. I mean, the cows don't need to be treated before the young calves do. The replacement heifers are not treated at the same time the cows are. And then the bulls, we need to be careful about the bulls because actually there's a sex effect, the egg shedding, and the bulls will shed more than the cows or the calves. I knew it. I knew it was going to be the, the men's fault. It's always the men's <laughs> fault. Um, so that, that, that does make some sense that we're naturally doing some refugia, whether we knew it or not. Right. And, and um, uh, getting to that diagnostics. Do I, I mean, work with your veterinarian, I take it? I would, I would work with my veterinarian to, and, and like I said, Mercam will help. They maintain a, a, a fecal egg count reduction database so they can contact their, their Merck rep to help them take these fecal samples. And then send them in? And they, yeah, send them in. There's a kit, we have a kit that, that, that you use to do a fecal egg count reduction test. And it, if you take it like, from 20 animals in each cohort group. So if you got the cows, you want to do the cows, take 20 from your cows. If you got replacement efforts, take 20 from your replacement efforts. You can send them to our lab in Lawrence and they will give you a, a egg count back. Uh, they will also give you an idea of what worms or parasites are present. Once you understand what's going on when, then you can start to design and customize a program based off that information. That's what we're going to do next. When we come back, more with Dr. Harold Newcomb. We're going to nuke some parasites here when you all <laughs> come back, so stay tuned. The Alert Design Farm Pregnancy Test for us has been an unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alert Us on Farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's gonna make you a lot of money. You're not gonna have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Harold Newcomb. <laughs> Dr. Newcomb is a veterinarian from Batesville, Mississippi. Um, tremendous veterinarian, uh, doing a lot of good work. He's technical services rep for Merck Animal Health. Um, which we very much appreciate uh, our partnership. Merck has been with us from the start of, of Doc Talk, and uh, uh, to have you fly up and spend time with us, I know how busy you are, but man, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna talk about um, fecal egg reduction tests now. Yeah. So it's, it's something that, you know, some people think you just take one test and yeah, well, I mean, it, it, to do a fecal egg count reduction test, what you're actually trying to look at is the efficacy of the dewormer, okay? Right. So, it's important that you do it correctly, and there's a way to do it. Merck maintains a database, and I think we've got over 600 and something fecal egg count reduction tests in our database, okay? Almost 700. But it's important to know how to do it, and, and so briefly, we'll just go over yeah. that real quick. I mean, what you want to do is you want to take your samples pre-treatment. So you want to take them within seven days of the time that you are going to treat the animals or the day that you treat them. That's what I say. Can I do it? If I'm running them through the chute to deworm, can I take my first test? You can take sample? your first test there, yes. Okay. 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 Yep. And you want to take 20 from each cohort group. 20 is important because that gives us a statistical look 
at what's in those animals, okay? okay. So you, you deworm them, and then you come back 14 days later, and you take it from the same cohort groups, 20 again, and you want to see a 90% reduction in that fecal egg count. Okay, okay. so I'm going to take samples out of the same cows. You don't necessarily have to take them out of the same cows. Just out of the same, same group. group. Okay. okay, is so, what we want to see, the same group pre and post. Okay, All right. so I can, can I just uh, go out and take a, a freshly voided patty? Yes. Okay. If you see the animal defecate, you know the, the, the patty is fresh, it's fine to do okay. it that way. And that's, that's how we do some of that in the food safety work too, in feed yards, you know, especially if you get out there in the morning, the steers stand up first thing and plop, 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 and we can get our sampling done. Real quick. Yep. Yep. So, okay, and so then just send them in. Send them in. Uh, there, like I said, there's a, there's a fecal sampling kit. Uh, send it into our lab at, at Lawrence, uh, and and they'll run the fecal samples for you. You want to see a ninety percent reduction in that fecal egg count. So, um, how much? What is there a charge with this? No. So, if you work with your veterinarian. If you work with your veterinarian or your Merck Animal Health representative, they can get you set up to do this. I don't know why somebody wouldn't. Well, it, I mean, it makes perfect <laughs> sense to do it because if there's a failure, then you've got to go back and you got to look at something. Yep. If there's, if it's, if those fecal egg counts fall below ninety percent, then you need to go back and look. Did I actually dose them correctly? I mean, if you if you think about it, the one thing that all farmers and ranchers have in common is that they got to buy something to go on or in an animal. They're <laughs> underestimating weight, okay? Everybody has a thousand pound cow till they weigh right. Every cow weighs a thousand <laughs> pounds, right? When the actual deal is probably around 13 to 1400. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's important to go back and look at stuff like that before you just say, look, I've got a resistance issue, okay? Right. Did I do it correctly? Did I apply it correctly? Because Think about some of the poems that you that are used. I mean, if you go back and you look at the shoots afterwards, then I mean it's just all on the sides of the shoot and not on the animal. So if you're going to do this, you got to do it correctly. Yep, and proper administration, proper everything, and and uh, otherwise it's a waste of time and obviously a waste of money. A waste of time and waste of money. It's correct. Yep. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about resistance. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Harold Newcomb right after these messages. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring. Shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Doc. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Harold Newcomb from Batesville, Mississippi. He's a veterinarian. Uh, many years of practice experience and uh, just one of those leaders in our profession and in the beef industry, uh, works as a technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health and is doing some great things through diagnostics and, and one of the things that this, the fecal egg reduction test lets you understand is maybe there's a problem or maybe there's resistance of the parasites that you're treating to your anthelmintic. That's right. So, I mean, if, you know, if you look at resistance, what is actually resistance? It, it's basically the way we've gotten to it is just a selection process for parasites that can live through a drug treatment. Now, we do things sometimes that, that promote that, right? But if you looked at the population of worms, 
in any population of worms, there are resistant parasites, okay? Yeah. Some of them to one class, some of them to two, some of them to all three. The, the, the one, those resistant to one class are in the, probably the, the highest concentration. Those resistant to two classes are less than that, and those to three are even less. Hmm. So it gets us down into how do we manage resistance, okay? So if we're talking about manage, res, managing resistance, one, we talked about doing the diagnostics, know what's out there, you know, is what I'm doing working? Yep. Then the other thing too we gotta consider is how do we keep what we've got working? And, and the way we do that is using combination class deworming. And basically in the United States, there's only three classes of dewormers. The macrocytic lactones or the ivermectins, the benzimidazoles or the white wormers like Safeguard, yep. and then the imidathiazoles, which would be like tramazole or prohibit, okay? Yep. Yep. Each class works in a different way but each compound in each class works similarly. So ivermectin works close to the same way that moxidectin would, or aprenomectrin, ap okay? So if you get resistance to one compound in that class, you're going to see side resistance or resistance generally to the other. Right, okay, I got you. Other dewormers yep. in that same class, yep. okay? So when we start talking about managing resistance and delaying resistance, we talk about using the classes concurrently or in combination, okay? The reason that we do that is we're trying to cut down on the number of resistant parasites in that population. The way it works is this. If you're deworming and you have an animal, say has for demonstration purposes basically, say that animal has 100 worms, okay? Mm -hmm. If I use a wormer that's 95% effective, then that leaves me five worms. Okay. Right. If my second dewormer is 95% effective, I'm down to one worm. Yep. So you can see that, that that delays that development process. Anytime we use an anthelmintic, we're doing some sort of selection pressure for resistance, but by putting those in com those classes in combination or using them concurrently, we cut down on that and actually delay the time that it takes to develop resistance. Makes makes sense. And you know, when when we're looking at you know the 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 times that we don't create resistance is when we kill nothing, or when we kill everything. Exactly. And that that doesn't happen. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, the other thing I always tell people is you know it, it's about animal management, it's about pasture management, right? And if you if your whole anthelmintic program is based off use of a drug, it's probably not going to last very long, okay? Right. It takes management. And, and the other thing that I always tell people too is remember that parasites have been here since the earth was cooling, right? And if we think we're gonna get rid of them just by using a drug, we're kidding ourselves, <laughs> okay? Yeah. We can manage a parasite problem, but we're not trying to eradicate the parasite. We're trying to manage the problem. That's perfect. Thanks for spending time with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to learn more about what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Harold Newcomb, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of All Flex Livestock Intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Zuprevo.com. Valley Vet Supply sees the hard work and effort of you and your animals to achieve your goal of being a champion. And we're here to help along the way. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you.